it is 1045 Central, 1145 Eastern, so we will get started. Good morning, wherever you're at. My name is Patrick Gillespie. I appreciate you joining me here today. So, and thanks for, you know, joining and supporting VetSec and VetSecCon as well. So, uh, my talk today is more of a mentoring session, very informal. So, ask questions in the chat as, uh, as you think of them, and then I'll stop as I can to... Um, address them. So like I said, very, very informal. So can everybody hear me okay if somebody can post in chat that audio video is good? Sweet. Thank y'all. All right. So quick introduction. Again, Patrick Gillespie uh, from the state of Arkansas. I work for GuidePoint Security. I'm a managing security consultant. I have been in IT and cyber for nearly 18 years. Um, the last two or three have been more leadership than technical. Um, started out in infrastructure, switched over to offensive security about six years ago. Um, I'm also in the process of learning how to build a business called Boost to Cyber. So on a team of uh, veterans that are leading that business startup to hopefully create more jobs for vets, especially uh, more entry level entry level work. I'm also on the board of Boost to Books, a nonprofit based out of San Francisco that helps with uh, essentially books for education. We also pay for search and have some cyber hiring fairs twice a year. So follow Boost to Books if you're not already. And I'm also on the board of Whole Cyber Human Initiative. We are trying to help close the gap, uh, the cyber skills gap. And we help in that organization, we help vets and non-vets alike. So, all right. So let me switch over to my notes. So I transitioned out of the military, um, 2008, 2009. Um, I definitely struggled with that. Um, when you get out, essentially you're unemployed. Um, you know, you have to move your family. You have to, you lose your job essentially. And those two things are two of the five most stressful things you can do in life. Again, losing your job and moving your family. Um, so I went through, went through that. I went through a long period of depression, loneliness. Definitely was trying to, to do that on my own. Um, have taken a different path since then. Um, but so today I want to bring awareness to a lot of resources that are free for you today as a vet as in the military community and also some that that are for everyone um but to help you transition into the cyber or it industry essentially to get to your end goal so the end goal is all about doing what you want having a career that you're passionate about and that you're thriving in in a culture or in a place that you're thriving in so there's more to just you know getting a certain title uh when you're when you're hitting your end goal so my end goal, uh, when I started in uh, I, my IT career, it was what a lot of people initially start off is money. Uh, I want to hit a certain salary range. Back then, you know, six figures was a big, big thing. Um, trying to hit that, worked as many hours as I could. Again, doing everything on my own and um, definitely led to some some issues with my family and also a lot of a lot of mental health issues. So um so definitely get help if you're having having mental health issues. Um, but again, today we're we're going to be talking more about how to get you help to get the training and resources you need to get the job you want. So when you transition out of the military, or if you're transitioning from one career to the next, everybody is hearing that there are mil essentially millions of cyber jobs open. Right? There are. There's this great demand for this talent, and but so many people can't break into the industry. So why is that? Why are there not many uh, entry level positions in, especially cybersecurity, sometimes even in IT? So as a hiring manager, it is very difficult. This is not an excuse, but part of the reason why you're not seeing many entry level positions it is very difficult to post an entry level job online because especially post COVID because it's everything is global now it's remote. So you can post an entry level job for pen tester or sock analyst, and you're going to get hundreds, if not thousands of applications that you have to sort through. And now you're comparing, you know, hundreds of people who have a degree, hundreds of people who have a plus net plus security plus uh, you have, and a percentage of those, maybe 100 or 200, are veterans. So how do you compare and choose the best candidate for that position? So that's, again, that's from a hiring perspective, why, does, why you don't see a lot of entry-level positions. 
So how do those jobs get filled? Well, it goes back to the old saying of it is who you know, not what you know. So HubSpot is, a, I guess, research marketing firm, but they say that up to 85% of all jobs are filled by networking. So when you are applying for jobs online, um, the jobs you see on LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, and other, other online job fairs, you are essentially targeting about 30% of the jobs that get filled. So CNBC claims that 70% of all jobs are never posted online. So essentially you're trying to hit a dartboard and you're only seeing less or you're seeing less than a third of the dartboard. So again, your, your chances of getting a job, posting online, posting a resume, getting an interview and getting the job offer are a lot less likely to happen. It does happen. Um, I for one have uh, not had luck getting a job posting online because HR automated systems 15 years ago, it was much easier to get an interview. Um, but still the, getting the job offer is, is very difficult. But in today's environment, it, it seems like getting an interview is, is, is very challenging. Um, so again, it's based on who you know, not what you know. So I, the past couple of years, I've mentored uh, about 70 veterans and I get calls where they say they have applied for 100 or 200 jobs on LinkedIn and haven't got one phone call. Last month, I met a guy, um, ex-Marine, and he did IT in the 90s, and he is trying to get back into it, and he has applied for over 1,800 jobs and not has not received one interview or one phone call. I know that that is extreme, but the 100 to 200 range I see pretty often. Again, don't, you know, it's good to do that because, you know, again, that's 15 to 30% of the jobs that get filled, you might... Um, you might get hired that way. Um, however, we're going to try to raise your chances of getting hired um, or sorry, getting the interview and then getting hired. So, so essentially the best advice I can give you today is don't do it alone. So everybody needs a mentor and everybody should be a mentor, but we, the first thing you have to determine is what is your end goal? You have to start with the end in mind. So find what you love, right? Once you find what you love, now you can laser focus your, your sights on that and find someone who is doing that job or has done that job because they will give you all the, the direct steps you need to get there. Um, and you don't have to stick with one mentor, have several mentors, you know, get on better variety if you're a veteran or military spouse, you can meet with people in banking, healthcare, um, you know, IT, cyber, everything. Um, but the biggest thing is, is finding out your end goal. So I, when I meet a lot of mentees that are getting out of the military or want to transition out of a, a career like nursing into IT or cyber, um, they don't know what they like and they don't know what they dislike. So how do you know what you like about IT and cyber? Well, everything that you see on a job application or job posting, uh, whether that's looking for a certain software, certain cloud product, um, you can get a trial of any of that. So if you're, it's best to go, you know, let's say cloud, there's a lot of cloud jobs right now. So let's say you went and did a free trial of Amazon Web Services, you set up the environment, the account, the multi-factor, you go through the CIS guidance center, center for internet security guidance, learn how to harden your AWS environment. So now you're getting experience in this field. Again, it's not paid for experience, but the biggest thing is being able to talk about what you have done in AWS. And that shows initiative when you're, when you're learning these things on your own, but don't just stick with one product, you know, go to Microsoft Azure, do the same thing, set up servers, set up networking, set up the firewalls. And if you find that you hate that, go to something else. Um, INE has a starter pass. Um, and I'll, I'll post my email in the chat here after a while. Um, if you want some of these free resources, again, I'd, I started making a PowerPoint for all this. I know tech people love PowerPoint, death by PowerPoint, but uh, I forgot I have uh, my three-year-old has better graphic design skills than I do. So my pie charts and squiggly lines were were pretty rough. So I did not create that. Um, 
So I and E starter pass. They have four free classes. So one is cloud, which is Azure, but you can also do AWS free, free training and free things online. Um, you can do a Python class. Programming development is my weakness. I I'm no good at it. Um, just I'm not good with learning extra languages, especially coding languages. So that is something I learned early on that I did not like. So I did not want to do anything that had to deal with coding all day. Yes, I can open a script, see what it's doing, but do not like to create new uh, programs. Uh, one is cyber. So if you're interested in the whole offensive security, pen testing, vulnerability management, GRC, any of that, there's a cyber course there. And there's also a networking course. So networking is essentially, you know, a, a, the foundations of IT and cyber. Um, if you think of networking as a map, you know, like like a postal service, your post postal service person um, that delivers mail. You know, if they don't know what streets go to where, it, it takes them a lot longer to get there, right? Same thing with networking. If you break into a bank and, you know, you don't understand networking, it's going to be hard for you to get around in there. So um, same thing for IT. If you're troubleshooting, you know, printers or file shares, if you don't understand networking, it's, it's it just makes it much more difficult. So you may not like networking. Um, that's actually where I really started was infrastructure networking because that's what I love. Um, but again, it's good to have a, again, a basic knowledge. You don't have to go very deep, just have a basic understanding of how to read a map, essentially how to get to where you want to go, um, for LinkedIn learning or LinkedIn premium is free for vets. You can go sign up. I will provide that link as well for those who want my email later. Um, you can, you get LinkedIn premium for free, but you also get LinkedIn learning. There's a ton Everything you want to learn is in there. So again, you don't have to go pay for search. You don't have to pay for uh, boot camps or any of that because there are a ton of free training for IT and cyber. Um, there are people who post YouTube videos and, and so many things. So definitely try the free stuff first. Uh, not all of the boot camps are bad, but um, I have been um, uh, kind of bamboozled by one um, that that didn't work out for me. So hopefully if you are in a boot camp, hopefully it's a better, better situation for you. Um, so again, if you don't like something, move on to something else. Um, so as you're meeting with this mentor or mentors, um, again, you know, tell them what you you're doing, what you like, and then tell them, you know, where you want to go. So as you refine what your end goal looks like, be in communication with them, say, I hate this, I love this, or I want to learn more about this. Um, and the biggest thing is, you know, keep going till you hit it. So a lot of times when I meet with a mentee coming out of the military, a lot of them don't have any college, right? Some have college and some have degrees, but most of them do not. So the big thing is some people are going to tell you, you have to have a degree. And that, that was true when I, when I uh, got out, it was next to impossible to get a, even an entry level IT job without a degree. Um, but that is shifting. So a degree is great. It will help set you apart from others. But if you need to get a job and you want to hit your end goal in less than four years, is getting a four year degree going to help you? You know, it may down the road, uh, especially if you got a master's and you want to do management down the road. Um, but again, it's a good thing to have it's just like certifications. You don't hear people, you have to have certain certifications. No, you don't. If you find somebody that will invest in you and hire you, because I have a bachelor's and a master's in IT and cyber, I have a ton of certifications, but 99% of what I've learned and retained has been on the job training. So I've, I've worked for three different companies in the past 12 months. So even with the experience I had at the time when I um, started GuidePoint in my prior company, I had 17 years experience. So that helped me get through the interview process and get the job offer. Yes. However, on the first day, a lot of companies, it's not that they don't care what you did in the past, but they want you to do it their way. They are going to train you on how to do things the way they want you to do it. So yes, networking is networking, you know, firewalls are firewalls. Um, so having the base knowledge is great and will help you onboard quicker. Um, but again, you don't have to know everything to get a job offer. Again, most jobs are filled by who you know, not what you know. 
Um, oh, let me jump over and look at some chat. So I'm hearing a lot of. Okay, it looks like no questions. Oh, it looks like Mr. Kevin Apolinario is on. He is great to follow on YouTube um, for IT, especially help desk, uh, help desk uh, videos and learning. Let me switch back to my notes. All right. All right, so two things needed to get the job. So again, you need to be able to get an interview, which is different than getting the job offer. So most people focus on getting the job offer. This is where getting that degree, getting the certs, um you know doing those free things for experience whether that's you know building your own vmware environment on a laptop and building a kali linux box a you know ubuntu box uh, you can do windows free trials of servers you could anything that you need to learn that's on a job description you can do a free trial of yes it takes effort but there there is nothing that you need to do that hasn't been done already and post about it online like what like what mr kevin does um again linkedin learning is there for you and for those that are not military um again i'll send some free uh, some other free resources but again youtube's a big a big one um you know, like places like i and e uh, heath adams over at um tcm security he provides a lot of free training and also a lot of times some of his search and training for a dollar. So he's, he's a great resource to follow as well. And there's also other programs like whole cyber and boost to books that'll provide, provide free resources for training also. Um, so the biggest thing, so again, if you don't know your end goal is try different things. Cause until you know what you're aiming at, you're, you're all over the place. You're, you know, one day aiming for this and then next day you're saying, Oh, this sounds good but you really have to refine because a mentor is not going to be able to help you if you don't know what you're looking for. And then once you get an interview, hiring managers want to see that you love to do what they're hiring for. Because if you don't, cyber and IT is stressful. If you don't love it, the chances of burning out are, are, are significant. Um, you have to be able to love it and look forward to doing it every day. All right, so getting the interview. So in today's environment, that, that is the hard part. So a lot of people neglect this part. So again, like I mentioned, several people post hundreds of jobs or post apply for hundreds of jobs online and do not get one phone call. Um, so it's all about networking. So for veterans and military spouses, again, this is um, primarily vet, veteran focused, but there are other resources for free for free mentoring uh, for non vets and military community, but to find you want to laser focus on your mentor as well. So I'm in Arkansas and we are in Walmart land essentially, right? So if if pre COVID a lot of the jobs most of the jobs in Arkansas before everything went remote was working for Walmart or working for a company that works for Walmart. So if I wanted to get one of these jobs at Walmart, what I want to do is get on LinkedIn, click on Walmart, look at their millions of employees. So I want to sort by past companies. So I want to focus on people that used to work at Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force, and we can do Coast Guard too, maybe Space Force too. Um, those, those guys count too. Uh, so what we're doing is targeting veterans at the place that has the jobs that I want to feel. They're more likely to connect with you. They're more likely to help you and they're more likely to mentor you. Now, you're not going to go ask them, say, hey, can you get me this job? No, you're going to ask them, what do you like about Walmart? What is the culture like? Are they military friendly? Are they, do they provide training every year to, to keep your skills and to keep you growing? Um, you know, these sorts of things. And it doesn't have to be IT and cyber people. Yes, that is the best way to get a job is to connect with people in those departments. Um, but if you meet with people in HR or, or store managers or any department really that are vets, eventually there's going to be a job opening and they will know the hiring manager or know people in that department that will, that will give you a reference, essentially. Um, that's what, you know, the, the focus networking is all about. Um, excuse me, let me get a drink of water. And for those still in the military, um, if you still have, you know, a few months left, look at SkillBridge or Career Skills Program. 
So I'm mentoring a couple of vets right now that are still active duty. Um, essentially, you get to go work for a company, do a in internship while you're still getting paid by the DOD to mm -hmm. to learn that. And and it's not a guaranteed job. You do get a guaranteed yeah. interview at the end, um, but hopefully, you know, you get hired. They, you know, you show your skills because. A lot of civilian companies don't understand the value that veterans can bring into the company because, you know, they've been trained that it's the degree that matters, it's the search that matter. Um, but a lot of companies like Amazon that's here today, that's a big sponsor for VetSec, want to hire tens of thousands of veterans um, to help get into cyber. Um, and again, a lot of companies are doing veteran programs. And again, that's why the, the, the team I'm on that's, helping build boost the cyber. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to get that business built and be able to create, create more military friendly jobs as well for the, for the community. Um, so, so again, focus on building your network. Networking is essentially marketing yourself. So when you're on LinkedIn and you're focusing on people at the place where you want to work that has the job openings that you again, want to fill. Um, and the best case is, you know, you get on Veterati. So I've hired eight vets in the last couple of years at different companies. Um, some of them, I that they scheduled a call with me on Veterati. They're six, seven years experience, have a degree, but they cannot get an interview to break in from defensive like IT to a offensive red teaming job because uh, they are they're high in demand and you don't see a lot of job postings online. And for those that wasn't here earlier, again, not an excuse, but it is very difficult for hiring managers to post entry level positions, especially in cyber, just because of the amount of demand that there is. Um, so best case is you get on Veterati, you meet somebody that is essentially a hiring manager for the job you want. So I've met with people in other states and we have a good talk. I find out what their experience is, find out what they love to do, what they want to do, and that it is something that the business I'm working for needs, it has to align. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to hire people, but if you don't have the work, you, you, you can't pay them. So it doesn't help anybody. Um, you know, you then interview them and you hire them. I've done that multiple times. Uh, so that's best case. You know, uh, next best case is you meet with mentors on Betterati or through LinkedIn. And then again, they connect you with the, the people that make those decisions for hiring. Again, this is this is to get the interview. Um, but again, you can't just focus on one and not the other. You have to do those the initiative things, learning those things on your own. Because once you get an interview, they're going to ask you, "What do you know about AWS? What do you know about Azure?" And you can tell them all those things you did when you set up your own account, your own infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, your own servers. You know, doing updates, doing you know, changing public elastic IPs, public IPs, whatever they call them. Uh, security groups, you know, your firewalls, you know, they're going to see that and they're going to know that they can train you and you'll be quick to onboard and to be able to get started and help them. Because if, you know, if you, if you love AWS and you dive all in and go get 10 AWS certs and you get an interview because of a cloud, your cloud background and they use Azure, you're not going to be able to talk a lot about Azure because all you focused on is AWS. So you don't want to dive too deep in one product or one vendor or one certification um, because again it's all about raising your chances the more things you can do that spread out um, it's more like a a river that's you know six inches deep and it's very long compared to a you know one hole that's dug to china so essentially you want to you want to you know spread out your options and then once you get the job that you love then you dive deep and go get your OSCP or, you know, your PNPT or EJPT, you know, all these pen testing things if you want to do red teaming. And there's a ton of IT infrastructure uh, search. If, if you love development and coding, uh, project management, I have resources that can help with that. I, I can't really help with that um, or provide free resources on that. Let me jump over to, oh, so I have a question. What is Veterati? So Veterati is a free... Uh, mentoring platform for vets and military spouses and community. So you can sign up and then go pick out as many dozens of mentors. So when I started with Veterati, I met with uh, Chris Dross was one of my first ones because I wanted to be a CISO. So back then I had 16 years experience, 
the logical uh, path for me to go be a C-level was a CISO. I'd been in security four years by then, and I had done 11 years infrastructure, 11 to 12 years infrastructure. So I um, wanted to be a CISO. But once I met with him, who had been a CISO, and other people who had been a CISO, that was not the job that I wanted at all. Like I realized the duties and, you know, they're, it was a leadership role, but that is not, not what I, so I, I shifted. So Chris helped me get aligned and become a better ID mentor. So that's when I started, you know, and I was a terrible mentor for a while. You know, it was um, just really just talking and trying to, trying to figure it out. You know, I've been doing it a couple of years now. So I have a lot of resources, um, out there be at veterati v-e-t-e-r-a-t-i.com and you can like i said before they did get hacked this year and was taken down for for a little while but before that they had tens of thousands of mentors they're trying to build that back up but you could go meet with if you want to work in the healthcare industry you could go type in healthcare or health or hospital and you can go meet with healthcare administrators hospital administrators doctors um if you want to work in banking go meet with president of a bank you know, meet with IT people at the bank. And if you're not military and you are professional, you can go sign up to be a mentor and and help people that are transitioning. You don't have to be a veteran to be a mentor. Another mentor I met with was a lady who worked at LinkedIn. You know, she posted on Veterans Day two years ago that she was given like six free hours of better writing. So I was like, so I went, I met with her on LinkedIn and she gave, she's the one that really told me about the focused uh, networking um, piece on, on marketing yourself and trying to, uh, find people that are doing what you want. And then essentially, or they can, they're working at the place that has what you want or know the people that can get you there. Um, looks like somebody posted in powers, another free resource with a cybersecurity track. Yes. There's a ton of free AWS training. Um, yeah, I, Michael, I see your mentoring sites. Other mentoring sites for vets is another one is ACP, American Corporate Partners. So that one is more of a formalized mentoring process. I went through that last year. It's a one year process um, that, but you really know what you want, what you want to do once you um, sign up for ACP, because that one's a lot more direct. Veterati is a lot more informal and you can set up one hour sessions anytime you want. Um, again, you can book me on Betterati. I do four sessions a month on there just because that can get overwhelming. Um, but message me on LinkedIn, add me on LinkedIn. Uh, again, I'll put my, my email in here once, uh, once we're closer to finishing here. Uh, that way you can reach out if you want to meet. Because again, I think Betterati, I'm probably booked out for, till about December right now. But, um, but I can create uh, calendar options sooner if, uh, if you want to meet. Um, again, just getting in the community, you know, getting on VetSec, getting in VetSec Slack, um, you know, and work together. You know, it's not a competition. It's, you know, you, you're going to learn from each other. I still learn from every mentee I meet with, um, like people are posting today. There's, there's always more free training that somebody knows about that I don't know about. There's, you know, and at guide point, there are people a heck of a lot smarter than me with pen testing and code writing and, you know, breaking into stuff essentially that I've learned a ton and I've been doing this a, a long time. Uh, Mr. Michael said, BetSec has mentoring as well. I didn't, I didn't know that, but yeah, there's, and again, find people on LinkedIn. All you have to do is ask. If you don't ask the question, of course, is always going to be no, because you're not going to get anything back, but ask people, they may not be on a mentoring platform, uh, yes, Matthew, yeah, I mentioned ACP, American Corporate Partners. That's a good one. It's it's more formalized. It's a year long and you will have, a, what I did was just a monthly hour call for, for 12 months, but it, it was it definitely, definitely a great resource. Um, let me look at my notes here, make sure I didn't miss something. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing yeah, is marketing yourself, getting, putting yourself out there, um, you know, getting to know people and, if you're in a city, so I'm rural, so I, I'm about an hour and a half from Memphis, a couple hours from Little Rock. So meeting people locally in cyber has been very difficult. Um, so if you are in a city, you know, I have a lot of coworkers in the Tampa Bay area, and there's a ton of great uh, security conferences there that you can 
um, get on Betterati or get on local, um, your, uh, what's the, the, there's an FBI one. Oh, Infra, you can sign up for InfraGuard. You know, do do meetings, find, you know, any I, local ISC groups or ISACA groups. And you can, again, meet the community because the more people you meet, you're raising your chances of meeting someone that will help you get that, that job you're looking for. Um, yeah, just like Mr. Kevin just said, yeah, you, you have to put yourself out there. Again, everybody's afraid of rejection. Um, but again, it's, you know, you, you're just going to keep going until you find a good mentor that will stick by you and give you time. Because a mentor, you know, a mentor's time is very valuable. So if you're doing the things that a mentor suggests, so there's a, one of my uh, interns right now, he's active duty army and he's going through career skills program with me, but he's, he, I've been meeting with him on better Roddy since January of 2021. So he reached out two years prior to his um, uh, terminal leave essentially. So he, he's still in the military till January, but he's going through, um, through guide point security university uh, with us right now as, as, as an intern. Um, but, you know, each month that we would meet or each quarter, you know, I would give him steps to do. And then our next call, he had done them or he had tried. So I'm going to give my time and more effort to somebody that's, you know, putting their effort in, you know, if you go halfway, it's the whole, you know, you go halfway, I'll go halfway deal. Um, or you go a hundred, I go a hundred type deal. But yeah, but if, if you meet multiple times and you're not doing anything, the mentor says, you know, it, it may not be a, the best relationship or you may not be getting the right advice from, from that mentor. So definitely, you know, try different mentors and it's okay if you meet, there's dozens of them. I've met one time and gave them a ton of free resources and never heard back. So hopefully, hopefully it helped. It may not have, but uh, again, it's all about refining what you want. So you may take a job that you love and you don't like the place where you're at. Continue to grow, you know, you're, you're gaining experience. And then as companies, you know, shift into being more military friendly cultures, you know, hopefully you can affect the culture there. You can show that the value of hiring vets, the value of hiring military spouses, um, especially with so many jobs that are remote nowadays. Let me scroll through chat, make sure I hadn't missed something. If anybody has any questions, definitely, definitely reach out. Um, oh, somebody else. Oh, yeah, Kevin mentioned Microsoft has a lot of free training as, as well. Joe Hudson mentioned John Strand has a pay what you can through Black Hills InfoSec. They are very popular in the cyber community. Yeah, Heath, Heath Adams over at TCM does as well. He has some. He has some really great certification things. I and E has a lot of a lot of free things. Um, let's see. So yeah, really, I mean, this is more of an informal. This is kind of what I do with mentors. Again, it's usually back and forth with you know questions and that sort of thing. But hopefully, if you don't have a mentor, this is kind of um, hopefully enlightening to you that this is. Um, you know, kind of what, what you should expect from a mentor mentee session is, you know, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't even have to have all the questions. Uh, Mr. Sean just said, yeah, wounded warrior has help also. So yeah, definitely reach out. I know they help a lot with especially service disabled vets. Um, oh, another question I get a lot is having a security clearance. Does that help get into cyber or IT? It does. If the company you're working for does government contract because a civilian company could care less. They don't even know what that means. So yes, you are more marketable. Again, if you want to go work at a Lockheed Martin or Guide Point for Federal or um, Accenture or Amazon Web Services, you know, the federal side, um, yes, you will need a clearance for that. And if, if yours has expired, if you've been out for a while, they will help you get, get re-cleared. Um, but again, don't, don't think that, going to apply for a private job that does not do government contracting, don't think your top secret is going to give you an extra $30,000. It's just, it's, it doesn't really benefit them. Um, so again, just kind of, just keep that in mind. But again, if you're applying for government jobs or contractors that work for the government, that that's really where that comes into play. Um, I know I've been rambling on for 
35 minutes, but does anybody else have any questions? Let me go back through my notes again. Let's see. Oh, other things you can do on your own. So for just basic IT stuff is download VirtualBox or download VMware. If you have Windows, you can do Hyper-V. Get in there, set up a virtual network. You can download what's called an ISO file of any operating system. Um, you can essentially upload that as the hard drive and it will install, you know, Windows Server, Ubuntu, Kali Linux, whatever. And you can set up your own environment. And when you build a, a Windows Server trial version, um, set up an Active Directory. So Active Directory is, is the application essentially that manages the authentication for users and computers and servers in your business, in your environment that's running, that's running Windows. Um, that way you know how to create users, you know how to create, um, you know, join computers to the domain, do group policies, the, do these sorts of things. Because again, these are very basic things because whether you're doing IT, setting up, you know, printers or new users, or you're doing, you know, defensive firewall things, because you're going to configure LDAP or radius authentication to the domain controller from firewalls for, for, you know, I am policies and privileges and different things. If you're a pen tester, a lot of what you're going to do is attacking Active Directory environments. Yes, you can attack the, the local desktops and laptops for, for vulnerabilities, but a lot of times, a lot of the successful penetration tests that get full business access, essentially domain administrator access to control, they could really shut down the environment, you know, create ransom, you know, put ransomware in the environment. There's a ton of things you can do. Really anything you can do as a domain admin is attacking defaults and active directory. So learn about the default protocols, like the, the old stuff, like NetBIOS and LOMNR and how to disable these things. Um, there's years ago, I, there were some um, cyber books. I can't think of the name right now, but essentially walking you through how to um, do a pen test. You know, again, a lot of this, training nowadays, I've tr I'm kind of shifting away from a lot of the technical stuff, but uh, into more leadership, but the, you know, learning how to set it up is going to show you a lot easier how to break into it, how to take advantage of the weaknesses and the defaults. Um, and again, we, you know, we talked about, you know, getting AWS, if you get cloud practitioner and then you go get Azure fundamentals and you get cloud plus from CompTIA, you know, now you're, well versed in this, the terminology for each for each vendor and each each certification essentially um and like and for those that weren't here earlier you can set up free accounts in aws and azure set up the networks create the machines just like you did on your local machine move data around move servers around um, there's a ton of free basic networking certifications fortinet uh, you can go, I know veterans can get the first three Fortinet and maybe everyone NSC one, two, and three. They're very short. A lot of it's proprietary Fortinet stuff, but again, basic networking information, especially pertaining to firewalls and security environments. Uh, Cisco has Cisco certified technician, certified network associate, associate CCNA. Um, there's a, and, oh, you can also get, uh, so you, you can't really get a trial of hardware. You know, you have to pay for it um, to get if you want to do like switches and labs and uh, physical firewalls. But you can do what's called like FortiGate virtual machine. You can get a, a trial and put a virtual firewall in front of your AWS and Azure environment, you know, to where you have a, a true firewall vendor protecting those those cloud environments. If you're interested in offensive security, you know, look at uh, PNPT over from uh, Mr. Heath Adams from TCM Security. You know, Pentest Plus is a good one through offensive security. It's, it's a logical one after doing Security Plus. Um, OSCP is a good one, but it is not US based. So you cannot use GI Bill for that one. Uh, that one is a little bit more expensive. Um, but essentially, and to, to practice, Pen testing, really, you got to be able to build the environment, whether you're building as an Active Directory or AWS or Azure, and then you can set up a, you know, Linux VM in these things, and then Google how to pen test Active Directory, how to pen test AWS or Azure, um, you know, and there are vulnerable machines you can download. You can download a vulnerable web app machine if you want to do web app 
pen testing. Um, you can download vulnerable machines that have a ton of missing patches, like download an XP machine. Don't, don't let it have internet access, but do it locally or locally in a cloud environment and learn how to do all those attacks that have been released in the last five or 10 years. It seems like every year, more and more, more and more attacks. So each time you hear of something that's released and exploits released in the wild uh, or proof of concept, learn how to set it up, get a free trial of whatever it is, and then use that version and then learn how to exploit it. Learn how to take that vulnerability and, and break into it. All right, so what should I look for in a mentor if I'm meeting people in a company that I want to work in? So the best thing is people that have are doing what you want or has done what you want, right? So they're going to be the best to help you get to where you want to be, to hit that end goal. Now, there's I have a ton of other great mentors. Now, whether that's like health, so mental health, um, you know, Struggled on and off with that for several years. Um, so a, a big part of that is taking care of myself, right? So I have a mentor. He lives in Detroit, and he helps me with my food log and exercise log every day. So making sure I prioritize me, because it's easy to run through a drive through and for lunch or dinner and come back home and just get back to work and take care of the business or everybody else when you um, – you know, have so much to do, right? So, but over time, I'm not going to be any good to anybody if I'm sick physically or mentally, right? So you want to have a mentor for each area of your life to get to where you want to be. Where do you want to be physically? Where do you want to be mentally? Where do you want to be uh, in your job? So in each area is good to have somebody, you know, you don't have to go, you know, have a paid therapist. I mean, I, I have one, I go see her every month, but, um, you can, you know, whatever it is, it's going to help you get to where you want to be in each area, but do each area each day. If you put off something, it's easier just to keep putting it off and say, well, I'll, I'll start exercising and eating right once I finish my degree. I'll start that when I get a job. There's always going to be more, something else down the road that you're going to want to do first and you put yourself off. So again, I, and I know some people have posted online um, about, you know, taking care of yourself. It's okay to be selfish when you're transitioning from the military. You know, take time to go walk for 15 minutes. You know, take time and eat healthier than, you know, if you're eating bad. So a lot of these things. So again, but for the career job, trying to find somebody that's doing that, um, you know, or that will help you, um, again, get that job. So as a network, oh, Mr. Irvin says, um, as a network engineer, what path would you suggest? DevSecOps or Red Team? So I don't have experience in DevSecOps. So really that's going to depend, you know, trying different things. So with Red Team, you know, practicing setting up social engineering environments, learning how to send phishing emails, learning how to do vishing phone calls. And again, don't do, don't do these things against businesses or people because unless you have their explicit permission to do that. You know, if you work as a network engineer already, you can, if you don't have a red team at your company or a, a contracting, a third party that's doing red teaming or pen testing for you, talk to your manager, see if they will let you set up a red team and do that alongside your network engineering job, because you're responsible for defending the network. So if you learn and if they will pay for training, Ask them, hey, can I have training budget next year to go do PNPT through TCM security? Then you can learn how to do that and learn how to break into your own network. That way you identify the gaps and you're also responsible for the fix. Now, if you're under compliance, you're probably already working with a third party pen testing. So you wouldn't be an independent auditor or independent pen tester. But again, you're going to be helping strengthen your environment. Um, if you want DevSecOps, I, I can find a, a rep on that. I, I just don't have experience there. Um, that's just, that's just not something I've had the privilege of doing with limited experience with CompTIA, A plus, Net plus, Security plus, and a bachelor's. How do I break into cybersecurity? It's all about who you know, David. So that's where finding a mentor, uh, through Veterati or ACP, it's going to help you get to that job. So you have all that. So if, if people have told you to just apply for entry-level jobs, don't just 
apply for entry level jobs. So as a hiring manager, I've posted jobs that required experience, right? So if I post a job, I want a mid-level penetration tester with five years experience, whether that's in IT or cyber, um, you know, degree or not, search or not, you know, I may get 10 people that will apply because they don't have five years experience. But if I post a job with that's entry level that requires no experience, no degree, and we're going to train them, you're going to get hundreds, if not thousands of job applications. So it's very difficult to, for a hiring manager to go through all that. So finding a, um, a mentor, eventually, hopefully you, you connect with a, somebody on LinkedIn or through Veterati that will help you get in touch with a, somebody that will have an open position. So like where I work at GuidePoint, you know, we hire people all the time based on, hey, I know this person that is doing all these things to break into cyber, but, you know, so we're going to hire them and we're going to invest in them and train them. So you want to, you know, so if, if there's a company in your local area, ask people if you could take them to coffee or lunch. If, if it's remote jobs you're looking for, you know, find the companies that have remote jobs like AWS or, um, you know, uh, Lockheed Martin, Azure, Accenture, um, Northrop Grumman, ton of remote jobs out there. You know, God point, we're pretty much 100% remote. Um, you can get on there, get on LinkedIn. And for those that I've already said this once, but get on LinkedIn, go find those companies and then find, sort through past companies, people that worked at Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. So now you're targeting veterans at these companies to help build a relationship it's all about building relationships and connecting with people that are going to help help get you there um yeah you it's it is so hard you if if you're applying for jobs again you're applying for 30 percent of the jobs that get filled and even half of those are filled by networking so essentially to get a job that you've applied for and to get an interview and get an offer you're looking at 15 percent that's still that's a lot of jobs millions of jobs, but you're missing out on 85% of the jobs that get filled if you're not networking with people on LinkedIn. So I know my time is up. So I really appreciate everyone uh, spending their Friday morning with me. Um, here, let me post my email in chat. Feel free to email me, uh, connect with LinkedIn, um, you know, message me there, email me. Um, I can provide a ton of free resources. Um, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and everybody have a great weekend. And yeah, just reach out and don't be afraid to ask for help. Go find a mentor. Have a great day.